four million hits and climbing. I'm pretty sure that's certifiable viral at that point. The most ever for a mini documentary. He was awarded the number one fitness and inspirational video on YouTube in 2013. He's also written his autobiography, Ex Con to Icon, which tells the ups and downs of what has been nothing short of an absolute roller coaster of a life. He now resides in LA and has started a career in acting. Many of you might recognize him from the ridiculously happy bodybuilder directing traffic in the Geico commercial. Yeah, doesn't get much happier than that. And a host of other commercials, TV shows, and movies. 2014 NorCal Fit Expo, make some noise for Kali Muscle! muscular women looking feminine we don't like too many muscular women <laughs> all right folks so this is if you got a question I mean you got one of the most accomplished any questions any question one of the most accomplished bodybuilders in the world on stage right now think of a question make all it good those. and I'm gonna come find you with this microphone Come on, people, don't be shy. There you go. Break the ice, bro. Hey, Kali, um, for a couple of years you were focusing on your acting career, and now it seems that you're going for a pro card. Sorry? Why is that? Why changing and decided to go in 2014 for a pro card? I've never just focused on acting, if you kept up with me. I just won the uh, cow from 2009 to 2012, I competed. I moved to L.A. in 2010. <laughs> I never stopped competing in bodybuilding. Oh, okay. You know, then a lot of people ask me that on social media. I think because I did a video, like, oh, you guys go compete, and I'll do the acting. It's entertainment. The stuff on YouTube, hey, it's entertainment. Don't take it for face value. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next question is right over here. Who was your inspiration to get so big? It's funny. I was at breakfast this morning, and I seen the guy, right? It was Jay Cutler. I, I was I was a ghetto buff, or prison buff, but I went to the Contra Costa bodybuilding show in Hayward, and I took a picture with Jay Cutler, and that motherfucker made me look, excuse my language, <laughs> he made me look like I hadn't worked out in about five years. And so I'm like, no, nah, man, you know, I was drinking, partying. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, can't no man be bigger than me. <laughs> so I went and did the Contra Costa seven months later and took first place. And that was my inspiration right there. And then I wanted another career besides selling drugs and going to prison. <laughs> it's a rough line of work right there. And actually, Jay Cutler is going to be joining us on stage later this evening. Be sure to stick around for that. But right now, who's next with the question for Kali Musk? we got a question right over here. Come on, I know you guys got a lot. I have a question for right, you. So uh, I know it's, you can't be a rock star and be a bodybuilder at the same time, but uh, what's your... Uh, Best uh, probably how to get your arms uh, with the I, I like to call it the tennis ball look. You know, you, I mean, you got the tennis ball on your on your arm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just uh, how to get really into that peak of that uh, separation. Because uh, I know it, it's eating and uh, doing the things right, but. Any exercise you can like can show and try to get like just the, the actual middle part really pulled out a little bit more. Because I know you're from Los Angeles. I know you've been training with all the top guys, and you are one of the best. So. <laughs> no, no, I'm from Oakland. <laughs> I moved to I moved to LA three years ago. But truthfully, 
genetics. But lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, preacher one arm. Yeah, with the uh, machine one. Because for some reason, that's smoother to me and it keep a lot of tension. Not the weight one, the machine you put the pin in. That's been working amazing for me. But it's a lot of genetic, and I had to learn that a lot of people try to lift too heavy on arms. Arms, shoulders, you don't have to go crazy weight. As far as shoulders with laterals, laterals in front, but of course shoulder press. But high, I do high volume. That's like, when you look at old school bodybuilders and all that, high volume. Everybody trying to, oh, six, eight breath because they lazy. That's why. Because I was one of those people at one time. <laughs> yeah, not to have the muscle maturity. Uh, Next question is right here, center aisle. Uh, what do you eat pre and post workout? Well, right now I'm getting ready for uh, the show in Los, the LA bodybuilding show. I eat one cup of oatmeal pre workout, one cup of oatmeal post, and that's it for carbs. The rest of the day, chicken. But that's right now. Usually I eat ground turkey and rice all day. <laughs> So that's why I, this prep for me was only six weeks. I stay ripped year round. Next question is on this side of the aisle. What's your opinion on the old school physiques versus new school? Old school, they wasn't as big because they worked out more. Nowadays, we don't work out as much as they did. They worked out three, four, five hours a day, maybe twice in a day. So they wasn't giving their body time to heal. Nowadays, guys, you know, uh, they say Mike Mincer brought in, uh, you know, less workout, and that's where Dorian Yates got it from. Work out less, you get bigger. And that's when guys start getting bigger. Well. Wow. Next question is way the hell back here. Way in the here. back. Way I in the back. More in the nosebleed section. Thank you, Callie. I was curious, how much do uh, calisthenics still factor into your current training? Uh, right now, the only calisthenics I really do is pull-ups. I do that uh, on my back day before the routine. And I do dips. That, that's about the extent of uh, my calisthenics. Or if I do one of those videos I want to go viral, I do them then. <laughs> Who's next with the question? Oh, uh, there we go. There we go, a lady. Ooh, it's a lady. <laughs> Where do you buy pants? I know that your legs get so big they don't fit in most pants. So where do you buy pants? Me? They say I got little legs. <laughs> oh, it's easy. People, 501, you go to Macy's. It's you know, people that's not muscular, like, it's, it's easy to buy clothes. All you got to do is go to Macy's. You can't go to Kmart or Target. <laughs> Kali Muscle endorsing Macy's. <laughs> Hi, Kali Muscle. Uh, Hello. What are your thoughts on uh, Frank Yang? Oh, I, Frank Yang and Elliot Holt are some of the most intelligent people I've met in person. You know what I mean? He just... He's like me, like kind of misunderstood, you know what I mean? But his mind, I mean, if he's, his editing skills, his mind is just out of this world. But it's like he before his time, you know what I mean? A lot of people, same with me, a lot of people can't accept this ex-con, now he's having fun, doing comedy. It's like, we expect him to be hard all the time, not smiling, you know, so it's just, people gotta think outside the box. Next question is right here, halfway down. Where you at? Oh, okay, I'm getting all Kelly, really, religiously, how long have you been working out? Since you're very, since you were a kid, you know, going on up. Since I was about 14, 15, so that's 25 years. Non-stop. I love it. It's like I'm high when I work out. Uh, you, but you know, let me reiterate on that. I just talked to an older guy today. He came by my booth. 
and he had messed up his arm. He's still trying to front raise 60 pounds and tore it up. How can you enjoy working out and you're doing a weight that's unnecessary? You got to have fun with it. I had to learn that with legs because my legs was, uh, you know, lagging because of my prison time. I couldn't do legs hardly. And at first I thought I had to go super heavy, 500 pounds. I see Jay Cutler doing it, right? And that was, he was doing that for magazine shoots and the video. When he's not filming, he's doing three plates for 15, 20 reps. So you gotta enjoy, I just learned how to, I always enjoyed it and did everything smart. I didn't try to impress the next man next to me. You might see me doing 25 side laterals. A little skinny guy might be next to me doing 50. But who got the results? <laughs> you know. All right, next question right up front here. Hey, Cali, uh, how often do you eat a day and what size portions? Well, to this this week is totally different. Uh, I got a show next week. So uh, I had, all I got today is chicken. I'm on low carb. So I had about 100 grams of carbs today. And that's it. Yeah, but I but I eat whenever I get home. So some days might be six times, sometimes might be five, eight. You gotta listen to your body. That's the thing to it nowadays. People are anal. You know what I mean? When you that's where the love gets. People stop loving it because they like, oh, I got a diet. I got a. I had a cheat meal. True. People that love this, we don't call it cheat meal now. We call it refeed day. We eat for a purpose. You see what I'm saying? Now it's just, it's simple, man. Now everybody talk about macros. That just compl I gotta be a damn uh, 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 engineer specialist to get me. <laughs> it wasn't like that when I grew up. My thing, when I seen Lee Haney, when I seen Flex Wheeler in the magazine Arnold, it was like 6,000 calories, that's what I ate. They didn't say 400 grams of protein, 300 grams of, you know, so don't be, just have fun. You know, eat big, you get big, drop your calories, you lose weight. I got a quick follow-up question, I'm just curious. You said you're doing low carb right now, so you're taking about 100 car grams of carbs a day. Yeah. When you're doing high carb, how many grams of carbs are you taking in a day? Uh, anywhere from 600 to 1,000. Holy sh! I started my prep for this show. I was at 500, and then I just dropped it to 150. Yeah, now I'm at 100. Damn. Next question is right here. What's up, Kelly? Hey, how you doing? Um, if you could go back 15 years, what advice would you give yourself? 15 years. What's the 2014? What that would be? <laughs> 1999. 1999, I would have said, uh, damn, why am I in St. Quentin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 1999, you got to go further back for me, because I was, you know, locked up. But I mean, if I could go back to my college, 93, I would have, because I was on my way to the pros, man, that nobody have work ethic like me. I went to Fresno State, and the Coach Sweeney was only testing me for antibiotics. Because I was in the gym before practice. Then nobody else work out. And I would have said, hold on. Because, you know, for me, it was a financial thing. The reason I got in trouble. My thing always been to get more money, get more successful. So I just would have held on. You know what I mean? Like, just hold on. Like now, like I give you an example, quick example. I was in LA, became an actor. My wife got six surgeries, so I needed money. Money, my rent was 2700 Uh The acting checks, commercial come here and there. I just wasn't getting it. It was a replay of my college day, and God tested me. 
the devil tested me as well. He like, man, just go do your quick robbery. You know what I mean? What you tripping for? You know how to do it. And I had to fight that earth. I like, this is a replay of college. You know what I'm saying? So I just would have held on and knew that God would have provided for me. But I'm here today and I'm inspiring people. So it's like it was all a purpose, you know, in it. Next question right up front once again. Colin Costa, uh, what's your opinion on Chris Jones? He gets the great. You know what? He's good for the young generation. He's funny, uh, inspiring. You know, he, he's, a, he's a good guy overall. He has good intentions. He's doing, I mean, he's good for the youth. You know, he teaches you his way and how he do things. He documents his life. So he's a good guy. Uh, Next question right off the center aisle. Started working out like around 14, 15. How many days a week did you work out? Yeah. And how long were the training sessions? Man, hey, at that time, that coach told me I was too small, 99 pounds. I was a madman. <laughs> and not to mention that, I opened up the first 20, it's called 24 hour fitness nap. It was called, the first one ever was 24 hour knotless in San Leandro, California. I was 16 years old working there as a porter, like a janitor at first. I would work out at lunchtime. This was my routine. At lunchtime, I run to the cafeteria, give me some chili cheese fries, go work out, right? After that, go to practice. After practice, bam. I go to work at the gym, take me a little nap, work out again. I was six, seven days a week, and I gained 40 pounds in 90 days. Oh yeah, I was meant for it. <laughs> Next question, once again, right off the center aisle here. All right, Kelly. How you there's, doing? An, there's an abundance of gyms everywhere nowadays. People are in the gym four, five, six times a week. What do you attribute people that are in jail or prison who have limited resources that come out smaller than most people in gyms? What do you attribute that to? Time. I attribute it to time and effort. And I got a video on that, like, why prisoners get so big. People on the streets, excuses. Oh, like I posted a video of some prisoners that was buffered and probably 90% people here, right? No weights. And so guess what they said? Oh, they got time to do that, right? It's more drugs in prison than I've seen on the streets, <laughs> and, and, right? But people say time, and I tell them, how did I get bigger then when I hit the streets? You, I, I was big, but I just got bigger, you know, bodybuilder physique in 2009 because I put the time in. People on the streets want to do six to eight reps. You know, then you do chest, four exercises, four sets, 10 reps a set. That's only 160 reps a week, right? Somebody in prison doing 500 to 1,000 reps a day, opposed to your 160 a week. So it's repetition. <laughs> Next question, just to his left. What kind of music do you listen to when you work out? I don't. You, man, I, that's a good, man, I'm glad you brought that up. Music, <laughs> working out. Firstly for me, coming from the ghetto where you can get shot in the head at a drop of a dime. How are you gonna hear somebody scream and say, look out, <laughs> right? If you in the gym and you folk, how can you get muscle mind connection if you got this blamming in your ear? The only time I use it is just recently, I'm doing 30 minutes of cardio on empty stomach in the morning. And that presses me through my cardio. But how, I, I just, I tried it when I was young, but we had the tapes. You know, we put the thing, we put the headphone on, and every time I did a curl, it would snag the damn thing. Like, man. I, you know, and so nowadays, 
it's like how you get the mind muscle connection. Did you see the elite, it, the Walkmans and all that was back in Arnold Day, Lee Haney. Did they wear headphones? How can you get that mind muscle connection if you. Nigga, you about to tear up something. <laughs> you. What the? Get the. <laughs> So I, I've never been an advocate of wearing headphones while working out. Well, uh, there's just too much going on, and then somebody might scream, chest, the bar might be on their chest, they need some help, and you can't hear them scream. It's just people don't think about, and another thing, it makes introverts and antisocial. Nowadays, people don't talk to each other in the gym. And they, oh, I'm putting my headphones on so I don't get bothered. How you go, you know, talk and communicate and make relationships, and you walk around, uh, I don't want nobody talking to me. I seen somebody had on a shirt, uh, don't talk to me or something, <laughs> right, a fitness shirt. Don't, don't talk to you. How, I mean, how are you a benefit to society and I can't talk to you? Go to the gym, make a friend, people. Yeah, exactly. Next question, way in the back right here. Where are you at? I'm getting Hello, on. I can't see. There we go. I really like your Geico commercial. Thank How you. long did it take to film it, and what was your experience like? Man, that, you know, that was life-changing for me, a life-changing commercial. I had to beat out everybody built on the West Coast and the East Coast. And... The thing about me uh, with the commercial world was I knew that I don't have I have a I don't care I attitude. Every other bodybuilder coming to audition. Hello, I'm Vladimir Shishov, right? And this is me. Hey, hey what's up, guys? I'm Kali Muscle. Oh, don't let the biceps scare you. You know, some corny like that. And they like, he got personality. Life is about personality. That's what I'm trying to teach the fitness world. You don't have to walk around like this. 10 grams of fat, two grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs. Loosen up, man. Life is short. You know, so the commercial, I got flew to New York. Uh, I was out there two days and luckily it, I had a bad, the worst cold in my life when I shot that because I had the air on me on the airplane because it was so hot and I was drying out my body at the time to be super ripped for it. So I got to New York, was sick as I ever been out on, I'm talking about as soon as I got off the plane, I was sick. I'm like, what's going on? And I'm drying out my body, no water for two days. So luckily I had two days to kind of recuperate. Shot the commercial, was done in 15 minutes. Well, it was done in 15, but I was the sickest in my life when I shot that commercial. What a coincidence that the Geico commercial was shot in 15 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Last question for Kali Muscle. Make it good, bro. I want to know if there's uh, any inmates that you did time with that you inspired that are now in your shoes, uh, bodybuilders or competitive bodybuilders that you know stayed out of prison or whatnot that you know you had a big inspiration on. Not that I know of. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm the only guy I know that ever got out that talks about it. That's in the because you know the fitness world, everybody, you don't hardly know nobody's story. And I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? I wanna, what's up man, what have you been through? What have you, everybody wanna seem perfect. So that's why I was like, when I hit, I was the grunt, I was the top of the fitness world because I came out with my story. Everybody else, you, you probably don't know too many bodybuilders, you know, about their life from kid till now. And to me, that would open up bigger doors. You know what I mean? In music, in football, basketball, 
they doc take you through when LeBron was a kid all the way to now, and they don't do that. Everybody want to see perfect. You know what I mean? And so I, I'm the only one I know. I heard of a few pros that hide, you, you know, they stuff. But why not tell it and be inspiration to people? You know, I don't know nobody. All my friends that was buff in prison, dead, skinny on dope, they just didn't keep it up. You know, I always knew that my body was going to be how I got financially saved. Some way, if it was stripping, <laughs> you know, if it was personal training, modeling, whatever, you know. But, uh, all right, everybody. Well, that's all we have time for today. Make some noise oh, one more go. time. Strike a pose, bro. One more time for Kali Muscle. Good Lord. Get that. Double bicep. Bam. Unbelievable. Make some noise, people. One of the most successful, versatile bodybuilders in the world. One more time, make some noise for Kali Muscle! The world's happiest. Why would a man with all this muscle? The women don't like it. You're right, they love it. Drops the mic and walks out. You forgot your water. <laughs> One more time for Kyle. <laughs>